This is the first time that the public is able to see what Avro's big new supersonic interceptor really looks like. That's 95-year-old design engineer James Floyd at the Canadian Air and Space Museum, home of Canada's iconic original fighter jet, the Avro Aero. Floyd was the chief engineer behind the creation of the Aero. In fact, his contribution to Canadian aviation has been so substantial, he's received numerous awards. And now he can add yet another to his mantle. CARP, the Canadian Association for the 45 Plus, has added James Floyd to their list of the country's top 25 Canadians. I think the CARP is a, is a wonderful organization. I think the uh, aging people need a lot of help and CARP is the one that's doing it so that, that, can't, that can't be anything but wonderful and good. It was the absolute peak of aviation engineering, not only in Canada but in the world. And the Brits recognized this, the Americans recognized it, the Australians recognized it, because I got awards from all of them. Four years have passed since design work was started on the Arrow at the Avro Aircraft Plant near Toronto. Now a lot of aeroplanes can pull 2G, uh, but they lose altitude or speed. The Arrow had to be designed to be able to pull 2G in a turn at 50,000 feet without losing any speed or any altitude. And that was almost impossible. And this is arrow number six, the last of its kind. No more will be produced. Some final engine tests on Friday, then wheeled away to what future no one knows. The government says plainly that a nation of 17 million can't afford to spend the bulk of its defense budget on planes of doubtful strategic value. Everybody knows the arrow was ordered to be broken up and sold to Sam Lax for scrap made into frying pans and uh, kitchen equipment for Canadians so that nobody would ever know about it. Nobody would ever be talking about it or thinking about it. The arguments were that they didn't want the enemy, uh, the Russians or anybody else, to see the design and so that if it wasn't going to be used in combat then it should be scrapped so that nobody would ever, ever see how good it was. Uh, but that was absolute rubbish. And, and this is why I'm so glad to see this replica now. Yeah. This is a, something that's been a long time in coming. I think he's a man who's done extraordinary things with his life and extraordinary things for Canada. When you hear the stories from all these people that were involved with the Avro Arrow you could tell it was the leader that set the tone and that he, that was him and he kept it going and this, I think he encouraged them to question and to see what, you know, what could, what, how could it be better. <laughs> He's a flirt. Oh yeah? Oh yeah! I've zoomed in airplanes and <laughs> I've uh, zoomed in just about everything you can think of. And so I was a Zoomer 65 years ago, I guess, when I was Zooming in the Lancaster. If you'd like to see the Avro Arrow up close and in person, you can visit the full-size replica here at the Canadian Air and Space Museum. At Downsview Park, I'm Darren Maharaj for Zoomer News.